Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We warmly welcome you again for another riveting encounter. This time it's the whole Sri Lanka taking on Nepal. And this is the semi final of SAF Under 17 Championships. Already India making their way into the finals in the com box. I've been joined by Kavinka. Good evening, Kavinka. Good evening, Jana. And of course, it's going to be a cracking game. The host Sri Lanka taking on Nepal, who were winners of their group. So this group, or rather this match is played between the winners of Group B and the runners-up of Group A. Well, the crowd is here and we take a look at the Sri Lanka team arriving. We'll hear from the manager pretty soon here in this pre-match interview. Nepal matches are very Matches are very good. Pride ke ante umana karna deval lapi kiuwa me me deval tika karando ne aniwarim maladivi ne matches ka ne ekala vada apne dekhniyat manchi ne no me matches ka jaigra ne karando na. In the me khale ke pasu me Lanka ve ande seventeen team me at semi final tatte ke dwar tavi le di ne mage bal mage balapurutu final in the tamai me dharga vali jaigra ne karna. अत्तरा में मामा पुट्टक में पार में सेमी एक इंदा पुट्टक मामा फर्स्ट आफ एक पुट्टक पिटिपास से बारे वेला तमाई सेलंग करने इम्पसे मामा अटैक करने तमाई मामा बाला पुरुष दुइने एंड हेवी गो टीम नेपाल मेकिंग देयर वे टू द रेस को स्टेडियम लेट्स हियर फ्रॉम टीम नेपाल Pressure is all good. Uh, I think Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and India uh, play well today. Uh, Sri Lanka and Nepal also, uh, I think, uh, play well match today. Uh, it's a normal game. It's play our game. Uh, our uh, normal game. play our game. Just simple. Play well. Right. It's all building up here in the evening of Colombo under night skies. Sri Lanka team and the fans really turning up in numbers here. Passionate fans, Sri Lankans always. Any game, take it, be it football, be it cricket, be it the netball, the fans are always passionate in Sri Lanka, isn't it, Kavinka? Yeah, Jana, especially on the back of that weekend, we had both teams of netball and the men's cricket team come up trumps in their respective tournaments and also we had the Sri Lankan legends playing against the Australian legends and they won that as well so it will only be right for Sri Lanka football to make their mark in the game as well and to continue the, the jubilations here in Colombo. So will Sri Lanka tick all four boxes? Today is the answer. Of course, another important final match is at stake. But first, one at a time. It's going to be semi-finals that Sri Lanka have to face. And also Nepal, what a brilliant win against India, wasn't it, Kavinka? Yeah, they, they were down in the first 20 minutes and then they thought, wow, we're going to give them a comeback. And they did. They certainly did, Jana. They fought and India blinked and it was 3-1. So, and courtesy of three great goals. So, Sri Lanka have to be wary about their attacking or rather ne Nepal's attack because they can come up with some great goals and some outstanding performances. So, it's more like Team Nepal had a team behind them whereas India had few star players but India as they have shown this evening, they do have the guts in them to go and win this tournament. Of course, Sri Lanka will be looking to make amends from their 
group stage defeat to Bangladesh. They lost 5-1. And as you can see, we have a few Nepal fans in all sizes. And young man. Maybe a girl. Could be. Here we clearly have Sri Lankan fans. As we get ready to welcome the teams onto the pitch. Fans are jubilant. They really want to support this team. And probably As lots of parents of the players also turning up. What a proud moment for parents. Especially their kids playing for their national team, for their own country. Nothing much prouder than that. Here we go, both teams. Now set and ready to make their way onto the field. Everyone and even we are excited as you. Here we go. If anyone's wondering where they've heard this anthem before, it was played for the, the, the 2018 Football World Cup in Russia. This was the theme song they've taken and quite fittingly this is the theme song that has been used in the South Asian games so far in this under-17 format. Sri Lanka in their traditional all white and blue as Nepal will take the blue outfit for this evening. Lovely weather here we've had at the Colombo Race Stadium throughout the day. When the tournament really started out, Many were a bit skeptical about the weather and many hoped that the weather doesn't stay rainy after the first match or the first game, first match day. But then the weather really helping all on the side of football. And it's almost perfect weather. The national anthem of Nepal. And now the national anthem of Nepal. <laughs> scale the mountains today or the mountains 
really standing in the way of the Lions. But we can know the results in about at the end of the 90 minute here. Oh, for some added time. Oh, is it going to go for some penalties? Not sure. Now both teams posing for their team photos and Team Sri Lanka on your screen. A few changes. And team Nepal. Look out for a few star players in Nepal, especially Anish, a very good player. And your referees for this evening, we have Alom Gir as main referee, assisted by Barua Sujoy, second assistant referee, Mohammed Nushad, fourth official, Shatir Abdullah, posing here with the two captains, that's Prashant Laksham of Nepal and Sarat Kumar of Sri Lanka. Star players for Sri Lanka, definitely. Sadhu Tatsura was very good last time. And captain Sarat Kumar as well. MD Abdullah, the ever present centre back for Sri Lanka. Really, he also plays as a left back. Played really, really well in last match. So these are players that we are looking for. Mohamed Riyas, a good keeper for Sri Lanka. There you go. You can see Abdullah really giving out some instructions. We can already see he's he is a very commanding figure in that team, Abdullah. So we have here on screen number 15, Unesh Budar Toki, Lachatapa, Subhash Bam, Nishan Tamang, Harish Raj Bata, the captain, number eight, Prashant Laksam. Number six, Ashwin Gorasi. Niraj Karki. Semanta Tapa. Deepak Tapa Magar. And, and Krishal Mokhtan for a goalkeeper. The Sri Lankan team here, Sudhakar Royson Bride, Mohamed Faiti. Yasir Sarfas, Kunanation Vidur Shikan. Mohamed Mufas, Fazul Rahman, Sadiu Tatsura, Atif Ahmed, Sarat Kumar, the captain, Mohamed Abdullah, a very good centre back, and also Mohamed Riyas, the goalkeeper, all making the 11th for Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka will attack from the left to right, Nepal from right to left. Here we go, it's kick off time in Colombo. It's kick off time at the semi final second match. Straight away, play goes down. It's so already Sadhu Tatsura being won by the referee. Yeah, we're hoping for a much better game in the first opening 20 minutes, Jana, because we did see both teams, India and Bangladesh, struggling to get a foothold of the game. As you see here, Nepal conceding position early on in the game, really not what you want to see, but then getting it back. It's good work there by Nepal. So, Sri Lanka having the advantage of home ground, home support. Meanwhile, Nepal, with the way they played against India, looks like a uh, slightly better team in terms of uh, how they played. So, almost balanced here. There we have the long ball, the first long ball of this game. I expect to see plenty more of that because it is a feature of the under-17 South Asian Games. Oh. Of course, Shall with long balls, you would want to find your target man, especially if you're a passer. And usually, the long balls would be played by your midfielders who are capable of that long ball and also your defenders as well. 
It'll be interesting to see how both teams cope with it as well because you have to defend that long ball unless you get a generous bounce on it. But Sri Lanka have some work to do here against Nepal. They would have been watching that match against India and realized that they can stage a comeback. So even if Sri Lanka does get that first goal, they'll have to be wary about a Nepal side that never gives up, Jana. Yes, right, he said. Kavinka here. A nice crossfield pass going from Ashwin, but cannot be kept in by Niraj on that instance. So Sri Lanka playing a one man strike at times. Um, well, looks like a front three. Now in Nepal, you can see Sri Lanka really pressing strongly here. Oh, once again, almost the same treatment they gave to the other two teams, pressing high and making the keeper to make an unforced error, almost made an error here. Nepal, there you go, position-based football. They like to play their tiki-taka, isn't it? Oh, definitely, and that can outsmart some of the Sri Lankan pressing. We saw that all three Sri Lankan attackers were pressing that Nepal defense, and it did work. However, Nepal were lucky to escape. But what Nepal can do when that pressing does happen is to exploit that midfield of Sri Lanka because when you have team players pressing, you need to be constantly wary of that, that threat that is posed in the midfield because you can lose your midfielders and that can open up space in the midfield. And that is exactly what Sri Lanka ran into in the previous play. So good there. Good, good work there by Sri Lanka, but number 10 for Sri Lanka, Mohamed Mufas not getting hold of that ball. Here's Mohamed Mufas again. Another bad touch. And also another thing about pressing is it really drains your energy. So, if you're physically very good, and uh, if you have the endurance, definitely the team can really press high and there you go Aruna Sampath on the sidelines uh, Urjan Shrestha of Nepal well I fair start. to say that uh, Jana that the pitch has been very kind to the players today especially in that the opening or the last few minutes of the India Bangladesh match because we saw that the pitch was no not quite good towards the end of the games especially in the night matches uh, well of course, it'll be. It'll have to be concluded. The, the pitch assessment will have to be concluded at the end of 90 minutes because the pitch can get a bit muddy. But it hasn't rained in Sri Lanka for about two to three days, and that will spell out some good omens for both the teams. And also, pitch being very dry encourages the teams to really play those through balls long passes through the ground and can trust your pitch and make some nice passes here we go it's a corner for Nepal Deepak yeah. Thapa on the ball nicely done by Abdullah Abdullah once again ever present in the defense line now Sri Lanka trying to go on the counter do they have enough pace too many against one on that instance now trying to put the ball again. Can be kept in. What Mohamed Mufas could have done there is to hold the ball because he knew that he didn't have any support on his flanks. So what a number nine would do in that instance would be hold the ball, Jana. And I think that would be the instructions given to him by the Sri Lanka coach, Aruna Sampath. Sri Lanka deciding to come into this game and play very, very physically. You can already see they are trying to win balls. They are really charging onto those challenges. Now pass going from Samantha. 
Samantha's pass to Ashwin. Ashwin once again plays that long ball. Almost falls for Nepal. He comes across and does the mop up work there. And now going forward, Sarat Kumar's pass. Falling now onto Sri Lanka. But eventually, Nepal's Nishan makes a back pass to keeper. It has been all Nepal here, Jana, because they have come to this game with a game plan. It looks like it is working off. Shan Laksam has seen most of the ball here. Well, they're controlling the midfield and it is no surprise that when you control the midfield, you control the game. You can see that in the international stage with certain players like Tony Cruz, Luka Modric in the international game playing for their, their club Real Madrid and you can see how they control the game and that's how they win matches. And like they said, they're coming and also I think especially a team like Nepal really relying on their passes are uh, really based on how their midfield performs and once again cross comes in but this time keeper Riha spills out. Nepal has a good chance, trying to pull the trigger, but the shot not really perfectly hit by the Nepalese number two, Subash, number 22, I should say. As you can see, the crowd is cheering Sri Lanka on, trying to get their team back into this match because they seem to be all over the place. Sri Lanka number two, Mohammed Abdullah asking, boys, where are y'all? Where, where is the defense? Because it is, it's, it looks like the defense is scattered. But Nepal have been playing well. Their, their attack has been formidable. Their midfield has been passing very well. There's Prashant Laksam on the ball. Seems to be leading by example, by threading those passes through is Nepal once more. A bit of defense there, nice header to clear the ball away. And taking no chances there. Atif Ahmed makes sure the threat is nullified, at least temporarily. Yeah, just hoofing it away into the Colombo night sky. His Prasan Laksam leading it to under 14 Chirutapa. Tapa again, trying to look for a cross. Number three, Deepak threads it in. Once again, not really hitting it perfectly. I think Nepal are now trying to take on those long shots because of the crowded penalty box. Sri Lankan players dropping back to make sure a shot is not taken. Even if the shot is taken, it doesn't make its way into the net. Here we go once more. Now going forward, Nepal here. It's Unesh, a very good player, Unesh. Even in the last match, played very well. Now ball with Subash. Subash dribbling past many players. Comes in Niraj. Niraj's cross put out by Mohammed again. But Nepal aren't done here. Well, it seems like it's a matter of time until Nepal does find the, the breakthrough in Colombo because they've been playing much better than their counterparts. Here is Nepal once more threading it into the box but once again Sri Lanka moving it away. They're living dangerously here Sri Lanka. It's only 10 minutes past. It's number two. Muhammad Abdullah coming up trumps once again there. I think Abdullah is the only I'd say a very strong defender inside the box most of the clearance are coming from abdullah this is where the other sri lankans other players have to stand up and then really contribute what they can do is the midfield really if you feel the threat coming in try and shut the doors try and shut those channels where the ball is being played in once again, losing possession going forward here, Nepal. 
ball with Prashant. The captain. Good ball going forward. Well, it's those second balls, Jana, the pieces that have to be picked up after that long ball is made through. So that's where the midfield comes in. Now, you would want to put the long balls, of course, into the path of someone of the stature like Mohamed Muraz, who did pardon Mohamed Mufaz. And then you would want one of your midfielders to collect the scraps of that and maybe feed that second ball into Mufaz's path. But it does not seem that Sri Lanka's midfield is existent at, at this point. Semanta. Pass goes to Ashwin. Ashwin passes it to Deepak. But Deepak fouled here. Another long ball. Looking dangerous Nepal here. Now through the left channel going in. It's Harish. But uh, in comes Sarat Kumar, the captain, to make a tackle. It's floated in by Nepal into the big Nepalese players in the box. Nepal attempt to cross in. He slipped on his own there. That's here, yeah, Simant Tapa. Unlucky slipped. Of his own doing, really. A good idea, but the execution not there. A player on the left really almost freeing up. Apart from the defenders of Sri Lanka. Once again, passes coined by Nepal here. Going for another attack. Well, no matter what sort of ball you play, it always seems to find a player in blue. Whether a player in white takes a touch or not, it does seem to find one of the Nepal players. It's like as if the, they're the magnet and, and the ball is made out of metal, Jana. Yeah, right, we told them. The other thing I noticed in Sri Lanka is they are trying to maintain some sort of a shape here. A back four, then another back four and uh, another four I should say here we go Nepal coming in threatening once again so even though Nepal really trying as hard as they can Sri Lankan still holding their ground here it's Prashant Laksan takes a shot and it's over the bar good effort isn't it it's a greatest effort by the Nepalese captain a slight error in the technique should have opted to curl it instead of going for a direct shot really but it's not as if they don't have plenty of chances coming in here is a ball through the through once again the Sri Lankan defense alert as they have been in the this opening 15 minutes of this game ball shot on target it's really troubling the goalkeeper Mohammed Rihaz. Yeah, but do you think that it is because of their inability to really break down the Sri Lankan defense? That's why Nepal are going for that long range efforts? Well, of course, it looks like the Sri Lankan defense is opting for a park the bus method, Jana, because it doesn't look like their defense is made of just back four. It looks like a back eight sometimes. And that's what they have to do at times because the, the Nepalese players are just coming at them. Uh, attempt after attempt, as you can see here. Yeah, And also, I ball. think in a match like this, uh, when you know you are on the back foot, with already you would have known with the start, Nepal are trying to be the team that is dictating terms. So, all you have to play is for a win. So... I think Sri Lanka playing wise here, even though, yes, it's not one of the best brands of football, not one of the best uh, in terms of tactics, but Sri Lanka hanging on because of that sort of a tactic. Yeah, what Sri Lanka can do, though, is to maybe look for a counter-attack. But for that, they need 
support from their wide men and their number 10, their striker. Mohamed Mufaz, really the lone player out there as his 10 other teammates defend like their life is on the line. That's the Sri Lankan bench. Won't be too happy with the performances that they've seen so far in this game. But I think if Sri Lanka does come off with a 0-0 draw here in the first half, into going into the dressing room, I think Sri Lankan coach would be the happier one. And now going forward, Tatsura. Tatsura, really dangerous player for Sri Lanka. He played really well against Maldives and now giving back position. It's Sri Lanka on the ball. Mohamed Mufas trying to get into a goal scoring position, loses his footing and loses his boot as well in the process. Here is Sarah Kumar but puts in a tame cross really. No one there to meet that ball. But that was the first glimpse of goal for the Sri Lankan Lions. And here is Nepal on the ball for the upteenth time in this game. They've only played 18 minutes. Here is Nepal trying to look for an effort on goal. Completely saved by Mohamed Riaz. Mohamed Riaz has been the busiest of both the goalkeepers here at the Colombo Racecourse grounds, urging his defence to go forward and signalling to them as to why they aren't taking any goal scoring. And here is another ball threaded through, only to be met by another player in white. But did you really uh, see that game there on the, the last instance? There was a Sri Lankan defender stationing himself really behind the other three but this you know what this does it really opens up the offside trap it makes players onside if the nepalese player can break the three men then they can be almost one versus two or one versus three it does jana and what you would call that player is a sweeper he would act as a player between the goalkeeper and the the back the back three in some instances and we have seen that in the 1970s it's not something that you'd see now uh, in this game in the game in the modern game to be honest uh, we, we can see if you go search on the internet you can find a lot of players such as uh, Franz Beckenbauer was a great sweeper but now the sweeper has been and here here is a chance for Nepal Mohamed Rihas fumbles the ball and could it be a penalty? It is a goal kick, is it? Confusion all round. Not sure what the referee pointed out. Let's look at it again. Mohamed Rihas making a mess of that. Still confused as to what is going on here. Referee, as we believe, signal for a goal kick. It does not seem like a penalty has been given. But it does seem like a penalty has been given to Nepal. Yes, it was Subhash, the man. But the only sad thing or the only disappointing thing is we were just talking about how the sweeper could really make the other players on. And because of the sweeper, they were almost into a 2 versus 1 or 2 versus 2 situation. It's going to be taken by Prashant, the captain. Mohamed Riha is a good goalkeeper for Sri Lanka. It's going to be a very, very important penalty kick. Mohamed Riha must be kicking himself to and asking himself why he didn't save that. But he has to save this one if he wants to keep Sri Lanka level on the game with Nepal. Prashant Laksam has been ever-present in this game and it is only right if he puts Nepal in front here Prasan Laksam for Nepal with a slow run up 
San Laksam, goal for Nepal. And Nepal have given Sri Lanka a mini mountain to climb here. Mohamed Riha's hands in head. I think keeper should have done better going in the right side and also on a very comfortable distance from him as well. I think he waited a bit until you know the ball was struck rather than really anticipating and going and whatsoever. Prashant now scoring the first goal for Nepal and Sri Lanka playing with the sweeper, still conceding a goal. Of course, in those instances where the penalty is given and if you are the penalty goalkeeper, just pick a side and dive to it is what any goalkeeping coach or any pro goalkeeper would say. Sri Lanka have an uphill task here. Nepal have been on the ball position. They are having their position based football and it looks like Sri Lanka really do have a task on their hands. Here is Nepal, the right back coming through the wing. Nepal with a chance again to, to shoot and it's another goal for Nepal. The now Nepali forward here it's Unesh who gets the second goal and it's two goals for Nepal in the space of three minutes we were talking about how dangerous he is Unesh just few minutes ago we were telling how bad or how dangerous he would be for Sri Lanka there you go Unesh long shot puts in enough venom and just deposits the ball inside the net. Sri Lanka now uh, really no point defending. Have to come out, have to play some attacking game. That's what is the only way. Vidur Shikan's ball. Now finds Atif. In fact, Sri Lanka that's Yasa. Sri Lanka really have to come up with a game plan here, Chana, if they want to even make this a competition for the Nepali counterparts because no clear attempts on target at all by Sri Lanka and Nepal once again Prashant Lakshan on the ball Nepal just toying around with the Sri Lankan defense he is number 12 Nishan Tamang left back for Nepal looks up front finds Tapa Tapa on a marauding run up front and seem to get that ball but Sri Lanka really do have their work cut out now when oh. and Aruna Sampath the coach you know what Kavinka when Sri Lanka really stays inside their territory or they know that Nepal knows Sri Lanka is not going to come out they can commit even moment forward because they don't have the threat of counter attack they don't have the threat of really getting back in time so they can really put in as much as men forward for the attack and get another two goals before half time yeah definitely but it would be an uphill task for sri lanka to do anything because they haven't seen the ball in that nepal nepal half really maybe on just two occasions here's nepal once again Shouts for handball, but he's cleared away once more by Sri Lanka. They might be two goals up, but Anil Tamang Lama, the Nepal coach, still on the touchline, asking his players to be merciless in this encounter. Still shouting instructions, asking his players to play. Maybe this must be signal to India as well. If they are to make it to the final, that is Nepal. Maybe it must be a signal to India saying, maybe we did beat you once. Maybe with performances like this, we could beat you twice. Here is Nepal once again. Feeds it into a player in white, but... As we've said so many times here, there's another cross played into the box. Dangerous looking one. 
And it has been all Nepal here in the Colombo Racecourse grounds. We can already see some Sri Lankan players warming up on the touch lines, which is not really shown on the camera, but from Combox here. It's again Sri Lanka looking sloppy to get out of their lines. And here we go. A foul going towards Sri Lanka. Mohamed Bufas, the player who was fouled. Yeah, the referee Alam Gil just telling Nepal players to calm down and there is no reason that they wouldn't be calm because their team is in a two goal lead. Last thing you would want is to any of these for any of these players to miss a potential final and a chance to get back. Shigan's ball. Now with Nepal trying to go on account of their own here. Nice passing from Nepal going motoring through the right hand side but the ball really touch taking it away from the ongoing winger. And it will be a goal kick. Well, it's been a one-sided game, of course, but take nothing away from Nepal, who have been doing a splendid job on the back of a win against the mighty India and showing why they can be potential winners in this match. They've shown class and pizzazz in their play with their passing, their shooting, the manner of which the goals were scored as well. Especially that second goal. And it'll be a drop ball. Abdullah's pass. To Roy Sun Bright. This time on the ball is Roysan again. Now ball with Unesh, the goal scorer. Going forward now is Lachu. Lachu trying to find a long range effort once more. Just scraping the top of the goal post here. You might have taken some paint along with it, that ball. Almost finding their way into that third goal, Nepal. Very, very sloppy sometimes. Well, what Sri Lanka need here is someone who can control the midfield and get some tempo into their game because it seems like the opening 30 minutes of this game has been very one-sided because of that midfield battle. It has been Prashant Laksam and Lachu Thappa. Here is another chance for Nepal and it's a goal for Nepal. He has fizzed that into the net. Subhash Ram. Subhash Bam. With your pardon. Take a bow, son. Wonderful technique. Nepal 3, Sri Lanka nil. Once again, all I see is the left back of Sri Lanka on that instance had to make sure the cross doesn't come in. At any cost, he had to make sure the cross doesn't come in. But he almost easily lets the cross come in. And Subhash, even in front of the two centre backs, Subhash really taking the shot. Both centre backs not really coming and closing down. These are small things that Sri Lanka can change to be better in defence when you know that a guy really is getting ready to shoot in front of your box you close in yeah textbook stuff Jana really and Nepal at this point must be thinking it it's practice matches here maybe a practice game for the final but do not write Sri Lanka off Sri Lanka nation of comebacks but can their under 17 
national football team try and carve their way into this. One goal could do in this first half, but if one goal goes to the blue, st the blue side, then it could spell the end of this tournament run. As we see here on screen, substitution coming on. Looks like it's number 20, Mohamed Sadir will be coming on for the Sri Lankan Lion Cubs. Sri Lanka not finding that final pass. Now going forward for Nepal. Prashant. Prashant finding Unesh. Unesh's pass not really getting through to the teammate. Unesh once more on the ball. Now through the right side, Unesh once more trying to get on the ball here. Atif Ahmed. Atif Ahmed's pass to Yasir. With Ushigan. Through ball. Ball with Nepal now. Nice passing here from Nepal. And Lachu. Lachu's back pass to Samantha. Another pass from Lachu here. Lachu really given a free role. Seems like he's playing in left back midfield almost everywhere. A player who has been given the freedom to get into places. And there goes the change coming in. Vitushikan out. And in course, number 20 of Sri Lanka, Mohamed Sadir. Yeah, the coach Aruna Sampat signaling that he really needs an injection of enthusiasm and motivation into this squad. So he's brought on Mohamed Sadish. Looks to beg your pardon, Mohamed Sadir, who looks to be taking a midfield role here. I'm pretty sure it was Rushigan who was playing on that left back role. So it was almost a weakened position. Most of Nepal's attack has been coming through that channel. So he is being substituted out. Maybe some other player replaces him. And Sadi takes the midfield position here. Yeah, but like you said, Jana, the sweeper is still present there. Looks like number two, that's Mohamed Abdullah. He's the sweeper has taken on that sweeper role and he's been doing quite well but it also comes with its risk like you said Nepal can evade that offside trap and try and score another goal through a through ball or okay. similar ball to that yeah rightly told uh, coming to that's what is the threat easily he can be almost one on one versus two or one versus three if the Nepal is defense really break through the initial front four. Nepal and playing some again. beautiful football here. There's Prasant Laksam going for kick, but be kicking himself to some extent. But not too hard because Nepal are in the lead 3 0 quite comfortably. And he also contributed to one of those goals. I think they can afford to take those chances now, Nepal, especially in the driving seat. They can try anything as they want. Definitely, Jana. And doing some keep yuppies there. Number 20 of Sri Lanka. Sadir. Sadir, I should say, Mohamed Sadir, who just made his way in. Ball once again, kept out. Now in goes Nishant. Nishant's through ball, trying to find Subash. 
but Mohamed Riaz comes out and that's the job here for Sri Lanka. Already three goals down, a very, very uphill task. Sadir once more on the ball. Foul here by Harish of Nepal. Well, we are nine minutes away from half time, and half time could not come sooner for Sri Lanka. They have a chance to regroup now, courtesy of a free kick on the halfway line. to make something tick otherwise it will look like a really one-sided game as it it wasn't already Nepal Prasan Laksham trying to counter and a loose ball is played through Nepal is through keeper comes out Nepal can they finish this and it's a wonderfully driven goal keeper in no man's land and it's number 11 Niraj Niraj, of course, one of the goal scorers in the previous game. Some lovely skill there and a wonderful finish to evade three players. And there's no wonder that Nepali players are in dreamland right now. And they could be heading towards the summit of the final, Jana. Yes, rightly told. It is almost no way back for Sri Lanka. Four goals within the first half. But there was a game in the recently concluded Four Nations tournament which was held in Sri Lanka where Bangladesh scored four. Sri Lanka was 4-0. Then Wazim Rasik scoring four goals. <laughs> so on Sri Lankan soil, Sri Lanka coming back has happened. Four goals have been uh, scored again. But that is a senior team. Yeah, Sri Lanka have to summon a Wasim Razik over here. With those kinds of balls, it doesn't look like they can. But summoning a Wasim Razik in this squad. Go ahead, one of you, Levin in white. Go ahead and do it. Prove all of us wrong. Sadir Sarath Kumar all through ball here but the flag goes up well maybe to the delight of the Sri Lankan fans that would have offered a glimpse of hope here's a wonderfully threaded ball into the path of Harish gets in the cross number 12 another shot on target but it's a team effort easy pickings for Mohamed Rihas who has been tested so many times in this tournament and in this game here is Nepal once again they get a corner out of it what's really shocking here is the way Nepal getting into those areas behind either of the flanks because Sri Lankan left back and right back really for some reason letting those wingers to get behind them and all they had to do is put some crosses in here's another attempt by Nepal not done here Nepal once more cross coming in but this time not really accurate enough so as I was talking about these two fullbacks coming forward they aren't even coming forward but for some reason, because of that sweeper, these two players for Nepal really using those area behind and the left and the right winger getting into those areas, putting those nice juicy crosses. All the striker have to do is to finish it off. So that is how the game plan is for Nepal. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka trying to come forward. But Hoyt above the goal post oh, that, that's a good sign the first real attack by the Sri Lankan outfit
chances like that are few and far in between and you have to take those chances especially if you haven't worked the Nepali keeper Krishal Mokhtan who of course hasn't had much to do in this game as compared to his previous game which was against India even in that he scored just one here is Sri Lanka looking to make an amends whisker away from the goal but it is encouraging stuff for Sri Lanka Sadhu Tatsura a left footed strike not really worrying the keeper but it did ripple the goal I think we already mentioned his name Sadhu Tatsura the man that looks promising always when he gets on the front foot he has to really fed with lots of balls now all midfielders want to do or all midfielders have to do here is to feed ball to Sadhya Tatsura because he is really making those daring runs he's very good with pace he's very good with his finishing so midfielders just go and pass the ball to Sadhya Tatsura yes Sadhya Tatsura looks like the target man at this point and I don't think you can blame the defense or the Sri Lankan players for that Krishal coming out to feed the ball into his teammate. He is number 22, Subhash Bam, the goal scorer of the third goal. Sean Luxon again. Bam. He is Nepal once again, but easily into the hands of Mohamed Rihas. Again, Sri Lanka going forward this time, courtesy of Mohamed Sadir. Well, Jana, being a former football player yourself, probably at even school level, <laughs> maybe a little what? bit, I wouldn't say as a footballer, <laughs> maybe playing some part time football, yes. <laughs> Of course, football is football, but what would you say to your players, especially when you face a 4 0 deficit like this? I think it really depends on the intention. Now, if Sri Lanka's coach is to really limit his damage and all he wants to do at the moment is to make sure they don't concede more goals or lose with some sort of respect, maybe he can opt for a defensive kind of shape here and then go in the occasional counter attacks but if you feel that okay take a bit of risk maybe even if we concede one goal we might have the chance of getting another couple then I'd say they have a front three and first thing I'll do is to take the sweep out I'll take the sweep out and make sure he plays in the midfield so 4-3 Three would be a very confirmation of four added minutes to this first half. Yeah, so a four-three-three formation would be quite good. Now even the modern-day football teams really playing with a three-five-three, three where the two fullbacks playing almost as a midfielder. So these are very attacking formations, but you still these these players are kids here. You can't really just go and change the formation or the way they play in one match. So it takes time. These are stepping stones. These are learning curves for this young upcoming Sri Lankan side. So the more they play these kind of important matches, international matches where they are being given with so much of exposure, that is how they improve. So let's see how they improve in the second half. Meanwhile, another three minutes remaining. Nepal really fluid on their passing here. Now ball with Prashant. Prashant's pass to Mohamed Sadir. Sadir does some dribbling. Sri Lanka Sad has been Kumar. seeing a good portion of this uh, this position in the past five minutes or so, Jana. That will be encouraging. 
It's not something that they can take as a massive step. However, given the circumstances, they have been very poor on the ball, but some things like this position for more than maybe two minutes here is Baum again, Subhash Baum, can he finish this? He's taken down, calls for a penalty, but the referee says no doing. Sri Lanka come away with another one. Another let off for Sri Lanka. It could have been going into half time, Jana. It could have been maybe 6 nil, 7 nil. And Sri Lanka are a bit lucky. The scoreline stays 4. And on that instance, that was the captain, Sath Kumar. Again, shot. Straight in the Nepali skipper, Krishal. It's coming from Nepal, playing from the back, very comfortable. You can already see their body language, not really. Uh, in a very stiff or a tensed manner, a very casual on their game, Nepal. Here's a replay of that foul. Number 18, Harish. again Samantha Samantha's pass and there you see Nepal really passing amongst themselves and there you go and it is half time here at the race course stadium well Nepal is home to Mount Everest and they have just given Sri Lanka a mountainous task here it's Nepal for Sri Lanka nil Had a question, can the lion scale the mountains? It looks like it's too much of an ask. And it's four goals for Nepal against Sri Lanka in before the half time. Sri Lanka to come back into this game would really need a miracle. Well, it has been a one sided game, Jana, as you can see here. The, the goals, Mohamed Riha is not doing any help to his team by fumbling that effort and Luxem putting away that penalty quite easily. Then came the second goal three minutes later it was number 18 Harish scored that. Your pardon number 15 Unesh who scored that at goal and then it was fizzed in by number 22 Subhash Bam. And then, quite close to half time, a moment of brilliance by the number 11, Niraj Karki. As we see the full moon, and Nepal have put an illuminating performance here at the race course grounds in that first half. Nepal shines as brightly as that lights and the moon. So at the end, it's Nepal 4, Sri Lanka nil. And the goal scorers in this match. There you go, Prashant Laksham, Harish Raj Bhatta, Subhash Ram and Niraj Kharki. And yellow card for Mohamed Abdullah. 
And that's all we have in the first half. We'll join you again in 15 minutes of time with the live action in the second half.
Sri Lanka and Nepal making their way out. So Kavinka, there's a change already. Number eight coming off, number 17 going in for Nepal and number 20 going in, number nine going out as well. Mufar starts off for Sri Lanka. Well, Nepal is known for their beautiful scenery and high peaks, including that of Everest, which is 8,848 meters, Jana, but it seems like Nepal have given the Lion Cubs here a mountainous task. Yeah, not only that, even the number four looks like mountain as well. Oh, definitely a towering figure. <laughs> here we go, Sri Lanka. Looking Sri Lanka seems to be on the front foot here. It's a bit of a cagey game going there. It was number seven was Sadhu Tatsura trying to fight for his life to get that ball. There was four defenders around him. You could see just how much Nepal do not want to concede here. I think Sri Lanka did end in a high note. I wouldn't say a high note, but definitely better than how they started. So Sadhya Tatsura, the target man for Sri Lanka, if they can get the ball to Sadhya Tatsura every now and then, uh, Sri Lanka does have the chance to get back at least two, three goals here, maybe four. What do you think the boys would have heard from Aruna Sampath in the first half? Or rather, at the end of the first half, Jana, when Sri Lanka headed into the dressing room. I think Aruna would have been definitely not happy with the performance. And uh, would have really asked his players to put their souls in. Because you are playing for your country, irrespective of what level, what age. At the end of the day, you are playing for the country. So, definitely, he would have just made or reminded them that which is quite a good way of boosting your players up playing for the country playing for the batch is always a prestigious thing there was wonderful interplay there by nepal but that interplay did not deserve the shot it needed but nepal come again for the up in time in this match Well, as you mentioned in the first half, Sri Lanka as a team, never mind a national, under 17 national side, their national team around a year ago did make, did see four goals being conceded. There's a foul there by the number 19 left back, Mohamed Fatih Manakard comes out for him. And definitely because it was Niraj's chance to really break down the opposition and almost went in to the box. So, a tackle coming on very, very late. Very rightly called yellow card there for Mohamed Fati. There you go. Almost broke through. The next move would have been to find one of the strikers. They're taking down the danger man, number 11, 
Niraj. Niraj has been a bright spark in this this tournament so far, getting two goals to his name. Goal in the previous match and a goal in this match as well. Number three. Will it be Deepak or will it be Harish? In fact, it was Harish, the goal scorer in the last half. Because Unesh was sawn as a goal scorer, but it was in fact Harish who scored the goal. And the ball gets a deflection. Looks like it's a corner for Nepal. For a long shot here. It's Harish skipping. But ball now won by Sri Lanka trying to go on the counter. Once again, not enough support to go on a counter. At least you need about three, four men to motor forward in terms of getting a successful counter. Mostly. Niraj. Niraj's pass going on to Deepak. Deepak's pass going in. Nepal getting another goal. Easy as ever for Nepal. And that's the fifth goal. Almost looks like no turning back from here on. Very, very good goal coming from Unesh. This time it's Unesh, of course. There you go. Ramro, Nepal. Ramro. What they would say in the Nepali language. That's his third goal of the tournament. Kunesh Budadoki. Excellent work there by the number three, Deepak Tapa, finding his midfielder, Unesh. But Sri Lanka look to be out of this game and maybe anyone can say that it is true but Sri Lanka would need a miracle to come back from this game from this point given this mountainous task of coming back five goals down but to even score one goal for Sri Lanka is does look like an uphill task, Jana. Yeah, rightly told. At least for the fans, for the people who have turned here, just give something. A goal would really put some smiles on their face. To play with pride, even though it looks like you've already know the result, but still Sri Lanka would try and minimize the gap of the defeat. Done here. Pressing hard. Nepal easily press resistant. Deepak on the ball. Now ball with Ashwin. Through ball trying to find Subash. Now Sri Lanka on the counter. Good ball. Nice here for Sri Lanka. But once again, first touch not the best. Mohamed Bufas. Sadira. Pass coming from Fati. Long shot taken. Almost. Almost testing the keeper. But Krishal not really. Tested on that instance. We have an injury to the Nepali number 20. As you see here, an attempt by Sri Lanka. Real hopeful one, really. Number 20 requiring some attention. And there is a substitute. The goalkeeper. Not common. 
Rubin Bugatti making his way in for Krishal, maybe saving the legs for the finals. Definitely legs and hands, Jana, because of course the goalkeeper would want to be fit. And with the new rule of five substitutions in in the modern game. Anil Tamang, the head coach of Nepal, has taken steps to now secure his team, give them some safety going into the final. Well, if they do make it to the final, and it looks like they most likely will, it'll be a replay of last, the last edition of the South Under-17 Asian Games, uh, India versus Nepal. However, that was played 7-0 back in 2019. But this time, it doesn't look like it will be a whitewash. Or, oh, to be fair, it won't be an avalanche for the Nepali boys because they did beat India in the previous game. Once Nepal again. have done really well here, Jana. Take nothing away from them despite this poor performance by the Sri Lankan li Lion Cubs. There was another attempt there to go and find their sixth. Indians really watching this match so closely would base their tactics on some of this gameplay. Okay, in case Nepal and India do mm -hmm. make it to the final. Who do you think is the more dangerous team? There was another attempt there for Niraj. Chance, a side of goal. But Jana, to answer your question, well, I don't think you can look at the previous match and say that it was, or rather it is going to be a, an affair like that because India were good today, especially when they woke up in this. Here's another wake-up call for Sri Lanka. Miscued by the Nepali left back it was Deepak Papa on the end of that. Well, the number six for Sri Lanka has been a sacred number, especially over the weekend. We saw the netball team winning six, their sixth trophy the Asian trophy and we saw the Sri Lankan national team the cricket team win their sixth men's Asia Cup but to see six goals here at the Resco Stadium would be horrible for all the Sri Lankan fans and Sri Lankan football followers Nepal just taking their own time to build up and then go for the kill here. Here we go. A back pass. And early on we saw that pressing game from Sri Lanka now really fading off. No one pressing, no one really trying to get to the ball. Oh, you can already see the body language. Not the best here. Will be might be 13 minutes into this second half, and of course, Jana, it will be really unfair to say that Sri Lanka deserved to lose here. But where now from here for Sri Lanka football, especially this under-17 team? Town. Trying to skip past here. And I think uh, definitely Kavinka, as I already told, uh, these are kids, but they are almost like raw diamonds. Once you start polishing them, once you start just giving the right treatment, they can become those valuable stones. So I think this under 17 is a very good level to start off with. Yes, under 15, under 13 is quite good. But under 17 is where you actually...
try to understand the tactics. Under 13, under 15, you mostly focus on how the game is played in terms of the technique. But by this time, the players are already almost good with their technique. All they have to do is to know to make when to make the runs, when to really mark, when to get back. So these are things that they can learn from this age onwards. So I think even though Sri Lanka are on a losing streak here, this is a very good learning curve and with very good guidance and also very good training, this team, this set of this bunch of players, many of these players can definitely represent the senior team as well. Definitely and what most people would be saying is that the Sri Lanka teams really need to be exposed to many more international tournaments especially as of this nature because they've all right they may get thrashed like this or even they may come up with their own wins or draws but whatever the result may be they do have that exposure and here is number 15 Rizni Mohammed getting some exposure onto the field and it's number 8 Fazul Raukman He's had a quiet game as as his other teammates have in this match but coming back to my point to Jana it'll be good to see how these players uh, how they manage pressure when they are playing in international tournaments such as these because all right national setup might be fine but you need to expose your players to an international setting maybe have more friendly matches some training camps abroad of course it's something that sri lanka national team does not not long ago they made that trip to Qatar for a training camp over there but it's things like that it's things like maybe recruiting some high level top class maybe foreign coaches and trying to mold them into the players that they can be because there is potential so we have seen a few glimpses of potential here from Sri Lanka pressure applied there on Krishal but easy stuff there for Nepal. Now Nepal to the right course. flank. A miss pass almost. A luck in disguise here. Now Nepal's number three, Deepak. Cannot keep the ball in. Will be a throw for Sri Lanka. And a very happy camp here, the Nepalese camp. Urjan Shrestha. A very, very delighted man here. Especially now almost knowing that his team has kept one foot onto the finals here. Just have to hold on for another 30 odd minutes. And they'll play India in the finals. Subhash once more trying to dribble. But just too much of dribbling going on. The first time he dribbled, he should have gone forward. Yeah, Subhash Bam, of course, uh, firing that goal in for his first and only goal so far in this match trying to make a fool out of the left back for Sri Lanka Mohammed Abdullah Mohammed Abdullah has been omnipresent in this game but of course like him and his other teammates have been out of it as well Mohammed Abdullah was playing that sweeper role Jana as you mentioned it doesn't look like it was paying off any dividends in that first half. Seems like Sri Lanka have taken off that sweeper role, but it still looks like Mohamed Abdullah is in the midst of that centre back line. It looks like they've taken a a three five two approach to this. Yeah, I think this should have been a bit early on. Looking at the pitch now. It looks like the Sri Lankans have taken a 5-3-2 approach. Yeah, but Maybe still, Abdullah dropping back and playing the sweeper role, I think, something. You can see he's not really maintaining the line along with the others. Yeah, not to be critical about this gameplay. 
for Sri Lanka, but too many Sri Lankan players are just maybe 10 meters apart from each other. That is exactly no, not what you would want as a coach. Aruna Sampat would be furious if he sees that his players are 10 meters apart, especially in that back line, that defense, because it opens up space, especially on the wings for Sri Lanka to come through. Here's a, a chance, but both players offside. And there you see Nepal really showing how the offside trap is to be worked on. And coming to you know why the wingers have been very threatening to Sri Lanka today because of the sweeper today. Because sweeper dropping back and making sure the other wingers, the opposite wingers, have enough space to break down the left back and the right back or the left wing back or the right wing back, whatever you call uh, in the system. So that is why the wingers have been a able to make an impact in this game. So the sweeper really hurting Sri Lanka at the end. Yeah, Jana, of course, especially when you are the host nation, you have to come up with something pretty good. And it's sad to say that Sri Lanka has been very under par in this, this tournament. They conceded five goals in their first game, and it was an own goal that got them through into this semi final. But like I mentioned on Friday for the 3.30 p.m. kickoff, it was India versus Nepal. Mentioned that whoever wins this match does get the easiest of, or the easier of the two when it comes to Bangladesh and Nepal, rather Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. It seems like, judging by the scoreline, here is Niraj trying to float across in and makes a horrible attempt to cross that ball in a bit over hit at the end the Sri Lankan fans still passionate even they do know the result they are backing the team and uh, just showing the team that they are behind them not to worry yes you can lose a match you can learn a lot from it especially in the under 17 circuit and these are instances where they can take lots of experience out of it. It's definitely that was number 15 Rishi Mohammed trying to pick up the scraps from that play from Nepal. Chances like that are far and few in between. But of course the Nepali boys are also human so they can make mistakes but with a little more than 20 minutes remaining you could wonder if they would make any mistakes like that maybe five golden mistakes for Sri Lanka's liking once again the wingers coming into play because of the offside trap not really working here once here's again. Niraj on the ball number 11 Hasey winger opts to go back now on the ball is Deepak Passes it on to Ashwin. Simanta. Simanta again. Goes for a cross wheel pass on the right side. And cleared off by the Sri Lankan defense on that instance. Mohamed Riyas. Not a great game for him today as well. There's Luxon on the board. Number three, Deepak. Niraj. Dribbling away from one, two. Almost finding his way past the third defender. Taking a tumble there. Niraj and it's Abdullah, we believe. Referee calling for medical attention. Play on the ground. Abdullah almost 
putting his body on the line. We see that attempt again. Abdullah putting his entire life savings on that challenge. Trying to stop that third goal and now receiving some medical attention. Another change coming in for Nepal. Number 12 going out. Number 9 coming in. Nishant being replaced here by Sijal Rai. Sijal comes in. Nishant goes out. Nishant has had a good game in midfield. Of course, he and his other teammates have put up a five-star performance. Of course, no pun intended when it comes to the scoreline. This is what you call a hi-fi performance <laughs> with a fifth goal <laughs> coming from Nepal. Do you think there's more goals in this game? Coming Definitely, by the looks of it, Jana, of course. They'll be wanting to inflict that sixth goal. I think they would have a sixth sense for this next goal. One touch passing here. It's lovely to see. Here's Niraj passing down to his center back. Samantha Tapa. 15. Unish. Is number three Deepak. Once again, now uh, this time, Binoj, Binod, I should say, through the left flank, putting a shot, long shot coming in from Nepal, but also a good block from the Sri Lankan counterpart. Looking for a counter attack here, Sri Lanka, courtesy of their number 15, Rizni Mohammed. So let's talk about the final. I think it's now safe to talk about the final. But still, football is a funny game. <laughs> but strange things have happened, uh, considering the scoreline stays the uh, same. So now, India would take on Nepal if the scoreline is or stays like this. Do you think we would see almost a similar game to what we saw in the last match where versus India versus Nepal? Or is it going to be a bit different? What do you think? Well, the way India played today, they have shown that despite they are them not getting a good good start into the game, that they can come back through glimpses of magic. We saw that Gangte fired in two goals, one which was purely, simply beautiful strike, Jana, but... That second goal was well calculated, courtesy of his captain, Guite, who assisted him. So with goals like that, and when you have goals coming in like this for Nepal, it's going to be a tight game on Wednesday on the 14th. Yeah, right, he told. And which team do you think coming up? Any, any team that you'd say tactically superior or any team that you'd say individual brilliance now every team say for example a team like real madrid yes it's very uh, it's a bit you know not on the same place to talk about the undersurgence in the real madrid but real madrid team more than tactics they rely on individual brilliance with their players so how, how do you look at these two teams do you do you would you classify them into a tactically superior team something some a team like manchester city or or team uh, with so much of individual brilliance well I saw this quote once uh, by one of the football pundits on TV saying that France won the tournament simply because they had a better team now if you take Belgium you have star started players Romelu Lukaku Eden Hazard and Kevin De Bruyne 
course, they are great players and you need star they players, of course. They had a better keeper as well, Thibaut Better keeper as well, Thibaut Courtois. And you might pick that team any, any day of the week, Jana, any day of the year. But when you're talking about a tournament-based team, a, a league, then you have to think about how your team gels. Of course, France won the World Cup without their star striker, Benzema. Here is Niraj coming in. Can they score the third goal? Looks like a foul was made by Niraj in the build-up to that play. But of course, coming back to that conversation, France did not have their star striker, Karim Benzema. But they did have a team. And that team ultimately won the World Cup. Someone like Brazil, who have, or rather who had Neymar, probably in his prime, Marcelo, Coutinho, but they didn't have a star striker. So you could argue that maybe Here's a, a ball through for Nepal. And it looks like there is a foul on the edge of the box. Once again, it's Abdullah. Is it? Came into the challenge. Luckily for Sri Lanka, not another penalty. Looks like Abdullah was the perpetrator in that instance. And it is... Yes, it does seem like a clear penalty. If we had the video assistant review, the VAR... Here at the SAF Under-17 Championship, that would have been called for a penalty. And I think the Nepalis won't really complain, considering how they are already winning and going into the finals. But still, it looked like the challenge came inside the box. Yeah, the referee, Alomgir, seeing that it was outside the penalty area. But here we see it was clearly inside the penalty area. Sri Lanka and Mohammed Abdullah lucky to not make this six goals against them as we see here number 22 Subhash Bam one of the goal scorers requiring medical attention it's not looking good for him so he'll have to be stretched off he's had a great game Subhash Bam struck that third goal into the net and he's into play. Taking one in the chest. Yeah, he clattered into Mohammed Abdullah and straight into the chest. It's going to be painful that. So he'll have to be stretched off and will be requiring some medical attention before anything else can be done. Of course, the substitution will come on for Nepal. Still receiving confirmation on who it will be. But we have been informed that Nepal have used all five of their substitutes and they will have to continue this game with 10 men. Not that they would complain too much. But an injury to Subhash Bam, especially with one foot firmly in the final, could spell trouble for Nepal. Hopefully he's he's okay. Hopefully he gets better soon. But for now we have Nepal looking to make it six. It's the number four. The captain on the field, Sema Tapa. He has to take the ball above the wall and then try to dip it in. Uh, quite hard technique, to be honest. Or he could take the underground route. Let's see what happens. It won't be Samantha Tapa who takes this. It's Instead, be Binod, Binod still trying to strike, but then going above the goalpost at the end. Trying to be a bit witty there, Binod, by attempting an audacious chip. 
But yes, there are 10 men are now on the field for Nepal. Not sure if Sri Lanka have noticed that yet. Sometimes substituting all your five players before about the 75th minute is risky. But Nepal now, I don't think they'd be really concerned considering how five goals with 10 minutes for Sri Lanka to get it's a very very uphill task almost ironically like scaling the Himalayas or the ne or the Everest of course Shana. apologies if we've made so many mountain puns over here it just looks like really uphill task for Sri Lanka to stage a comeback especially in this last 10 minutes but even though it's 10 versus 11 men, call for offside there. But even though it's 10 versus 11 men here at the Colombo Racecourse Stadium, well, this looked like there seems to be no way back for the Lion Cubs in white. Mind you, they also substituted their goalkeeper as well, so they have, or oh, yeah, they they are confident in their substitutions and I mean Sri Lanka can use this man advantage to get a goal or a couple to make sure they don't lose in a very huge margin they can keep it to 5-2 or a 5-1 which is quite respectable but still even with 10 men you can see Nepal really bossing the position here Almost looks like Sri Lanka, the team with a man uh, out here. Once again, Nepal trying to go on a counter here with 10 man. It's still looking dangerous, Nepal here. Yeah, the 10 men of Nepal do seem to be, be playing as if they were 13. Here's Nepal coming back for number 6. The 6th goal is in inevitable, but with 10 men it'll be quite tricky to make it number 6. Ball played out onto the wing. It's number seven, Binod, looking for number 15, Unesh. Unesh takes a shot. It's wide. It's over the goal. And Mohamed Riaz can breathe a bit better. As you can see, the Sri Lankans are down and out. It hasn't been their day so far. Hasn't been their tournament really. They've only scored one goal to their name. The other coming off an own goal in the Maldives match. Is Nepal trying to boot in another attempt? Some of the Nepali players looking to be out of steam, but of course they can do that by understanding that they are five goals ahead. Foul there, and it's a yellow card for the number six of Nepal, Ashwin. Here we have a replay. Yep, Ashwin took out Mohamed Sadir, who was substituted at in the first 35 minutes. He is a cross attempted in, and it's a an attempt, but unfortunately not on goal, but fizzed in 
for Sri Lanka and it was number 15. So we see here Rizni Mohammed who failed to control that shot. There might be 10 men down, but Nepal look to be playing with full intent here. It's as if they are a couple of goals down, but with that spirit, they still get a corner. Well, just below me, the Sri Lankan fans are staying back to watch their team until the end. Here is Nepal with another cross, header towards goal. But it comes to nothing. But credit to where it is due. Sri Lankan fans staying on and supporting their team till the very end. Seem to be playing with three at the back, Nepal, despite them going one man down. Ball threaded through, but unfortunately, not finding their number nine, Sijal Rai. Well, in terms of playing this second half, it does seem that Sri Lanka did do their, their homework in that first half, despite conceding one goal. They seem to have done better, but in the grand scheme of things, Nepal have been such a dominant force, and it'll be interesting to see how they are handled by the Indians. The Indians, of course, watching this as we speak. Bibiano and his men watching this intently but they might be saying look here guys it does not seem like we can take much from this except for the fact that Nepal have been playing well in this match because maybe you can't equate Sri Lanka to the Indian side And they'll just have to take it as it comes. Of course, the tactics will be laid out for this game. Maybe not the same tactics that they used on Friday's match here is fouled by one of the Nepali players on Sh the Sri Lankan midfielder. Stomp on the foot there on, I believe, Sadhu Patsara. Of course, Bibiano and his men won't be looking at this match and taking too many leaves out of this page, out of this chapter, though, in the book of the Under-17 SAF Championship 2022. Well, what now here for Sri Lanka, you might ask? Well, they've shown what they are capable of and it seems like South Asian contingent is a bit too strong for them when you take it in the grand scheme of things. They've faced Maldives, they faced Bangladesh and now Nepal and are going down with 10 goals scored against them and just two goals, one of them being an own goal. Nepal, beg your pardon, it was a yellow card issued here for Mohamed Mufaz. Mohamed Mufaz, of course, being that live wire in that first half. And 
like his other teammates not getting into the end of that Nepali goal. Here is Bino twisting and turning and another goal and it is six. Let's talk about six baby says Nepal and it is their number nine Sijal Rai who puts the final nail in the Sri Lankan coffin and it is good night to the Sri Lankan says Nepal Nepal 6 Sri Lanka nil Could there be another nail in the coffin here? I did mention that the sixth goal could have been the last, the final one. Sri Lanka really have themselves to blame in this tournament. They've not been at par and confirmation of three added minutes. Three long minutes for Sri Lanka. Here is number 17, Saroj, on the ball, going to the corner flag, trying some tricks and treats. But it was Sadhu Tatsaran having none of it. Nepal regroup. There's another shot. Shots flying in this evening's game. Nepali fans there would be the happier of the set of fans to see here. Anyone taking a shot really, they're queuing up to take shots. Of course, when the score is 6-0, you would want to get your name on the score sheet as well. Risky stuff there by the Sri Lankan defense as they have been doing this night. Well, it was Krishal who started this game in goal and had little to nothing to do in that first half and in the bit of the second half but here is Rubin who also has had little to nothing to do in this first uh, in this second half it's some good game time here for the substitute keeper Nepal looking to make it maybe seven is number 20 wriggling turning and it almost was number uh, number seven for Nepal but it was offside to the Sri Lankans liking It is full time here. Lions might be kings of the jungle and elsewhere in Asia, but it transformed to conquerors of Everest. That was an uphill task. It's Nepal 6, Sri Lanka nil at the end of 90 minutes. It is India versus Nepal in the final. Silky performance by the men in blue. And it'll be a replay of that group stage match between India and Nepal. Sri Lankans really have themselves to blame here. The boys in white not turning up at all in this game. And this tournament will be one to forget.
with a terrific performance take nothing away from that Nepali performance here we have a recap of the goals Mohamed Ruhas making a mess of that only for the captain Prasan Laksam to start and give the first of six goals to Nepal and then it was number 18 Harish Raj who curled it beautifully in the, into that top corner wonderful play there by Nepal and then it was three it was three and Nepal were roaming free number 22 Subhash Bam till another mistake at almost the end of half time it was Niraj who saw out the keeper and saw out three other defenders and then you knew that they were going to run loose it was number three number four number five Unesh five star performance but then it turned into a six star and it was the number nine the substitute one of the five substitutes Sijal Rai here are the Sri Lankan attempts on goal nothing really troubling any of the substitute keepers Nepali chances it could have been eight it could have been nine oh my it could have been even ten but to those few Nepali fans it has been a wonderful display they can walk to their homes with heads held up high Here we have that massive number six next to the goals of Nepal. 66% ball position, 21 shots, and on target only 12. Only 12 is an understatement. And five shots on target, five shots, and only one on target for Sri Lanka. 11 fouls each, four corners to Sri Lanka's none. And it was three yellow cards to Sri Lanka and no red cards as well and here we have summary of the game goals only on Nepal's side as well as you can see Prashant Laksam the 21st minute Harish then Subhash Bam and Niraj completing the number four goal in the first half then Unesh and Sijal Rai coming on for Nepal and scoring number five and six respectively. The look hard's only issue to those in Sri Lankan white. We are very happy to win final. It's our dream to reach in final. Uh, it, our boys played very well. Uh, this game is dedicated to all the Nepalese fans. Uh, we were in Nepal, uh, all over the world. And we are very glad to play in front of all the, uh, in Sri Lanka, as in Sri Lanka. We are very glad to be here. Uh, thank you. No, 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 we didn't expect it. Uh, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That was Prashant Laksam, captain and the first goal scorer for Nepal doing his post-match duties. Proud captain and a proud Nepali team heading to the final with India. And that will be played at the Racecourse Stadium in Colombo on the 14th. And with that, we end our coverage here at the Colombo Racecourse grounds. A big shout out to everyone who was present here at Colombo, especially the Sri Lanka Football TV media production team. And it is Jana and myself, Kavinka, on the commentaries. To everyone listening in, take care, good night and God bless.